Aum. Pancha prana mano buddhi dashendriya samanvitam. Apanchi krita bhuto tang sukshmangam bhogasadhanam. Pancha prana, the five pranas. Mano buddhi, mind and intelligence. Dasha indriya, ten sense organs. Samanvitam, combined. Apang chikrita bhuto tang, formed from the tan matras before their panchi karana. Sukshmangang, subtle body. Bhogasadhanam, instrument of experience. The five pranas, the ten organs, the manas and the buddhi formed from the tan matras, rudimentary elements before their five-fold division and mutual combination with one another, is the subtle body, the instrument of experience of the individual. Namaste. This is a very interesting verse. The previous verse, text 12, was about the gross body. This verse is about the subtle body. And the subtle body is quite complex and sophisticated. So this is giving the parts or the organs of the subtle body. And so let me explain these terms for those of you who are not familiar. The five pranas are prana, whose movement is inward and upward. This is the main vital life force. Apana, which moves outward and downward. Udana, which is in the throat, the movement is upward and it deals mainly with respiration. The samana, which is located in the navel, in a spiral movement, uh, which deals with digestion and metabolism. And the vyana, originating from the heart, which is the circulatory energy. Then the ten organs. There are five jnanendriyas, or knowledge-gathering organs, the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, and the skin, which give us sight, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touch, respectively. Then there's the karmendriya, or active senses, the mouth, which gives us speech, the feet, to move and walk, the hands, to grasp and work, the anus, for excretion, and the genitals, for procreation. Now, each of the five knowledge-gathering senses is linked with one of the five elements in its form as a tanmatra. Tanmatra means a subtle element. In other words, it contains the qualities of the element, but not the substance of it. For example, the eyes are linked with fire because they see light and form. The tongue is linked with water because it gives the sense of taste. Then there's this process called the five-fold division and mutual combination of the five gross elements. This is how the subtle elements are transferred into gross elements. And it's a very complex process, which I'm going to narrate to you with the help of a table. In stage one, we have the five tanmatras, the objects of the subtle sense organs, space, air, fire, water, and earth. In stage two, they demonstrate a tendency to divide in two. And in stage three, the division is complete. In stage four, 
one half of the divided tanmatra splits into four parts. And in stage five, each half joins with four bits from the others to form a combination of five of the unique subtle elements. And this is how the subtle elements become gross. Now, generally, in this series, we are dealing with knowledge of the Atma, the self, and self-realization, enlightenment. So, why are we talking about the creation? If you wind up in a trap, if you know the construction of the trap, you can spring it and get out. If you don't know, then it's a process of trial and error, and it's going to be a very uncomfortable process. So, by giving us knowledge of the creation, how the elements linked with the senses form the mind and the subtle body, we can understand the factors that are keeping us in bondage, that are uh, making us think, oh, I am a jiva, I am born, I suffer the results of my previous activities, and then I die and go on to another body and so forth. So, to save us from all of this suffering, we are given the combination, as it were, of the lock that keeps us chained to the process of samsara. This is difficult to describe. It's difficult to understand, I know, because the material world, from the viewpoint of the enlightened being, is a completely different thing than from the viewpoint of materialism, such as chemistry and physics and so forth. We're not really concerned with those material interactions because we're not trying to develop strategies for exploitation of the material elements, quite the reverse. We're trying to develop strategies to get out of the entanglement with the material elements. <laughs> so our approach, our view, is completely subjective. It's consciousness-oriented, not objective at all. Subjective. So this is the basic difference between Vedic knowledge and material science. This is why the views of the material world of these two disciplines are completely different. It's the same world. But the scientists and so on speculate the existence of an objective reality. But as we have mentioned several times, there is no proof that the objective world is real. Why is that? Because there's nothing to compare it to. There is no other world, in the scientist's view, that we can compare the world to and say, oh, this is real and that one's not. In other words, there's no standard of reality, no way to measure how real the world is. So it's simply a matter of conjecture. And the scientists, the materialists, have chosen to speculate that there is an objective world, if only because it helps them conjure up these mathematical formulas that help them invent all these different technologies. And they point to this as proof that their view is correct. However, and we can turn that argument back on itself very easily, they cannot demonstrate that it brings happiness. They cannot show that it leads to enlightenment, and they cannot demonstrate detachment and liberation. So this is the downfall of the materialist view. We live in a world now that has unparalleled material convenience and opulence, and yet everybody is miserable. Have you noticed? If, if not, why are they fighting so many wars? Every time they claim, 
Okay, now we're going to introduce something new that's going to solve the problems of material suffering. What does it do? It only brings more material suffering. <laughs> Let's invent pesticides. Let's invent chemical fertilizers. And what happens? All the streams and the earth and uh, everything becomes polluted with weird chemicals that have unknown effects, long-term effects, damage the whole ecosystem and so on. We lose all the topsoil. I read somewhere that there's like 50 years of topsoil left, after which we won't be able to grow enough food to feed everybody. So this is the result of so-called scientific advancement, that every year millions of people are hurt and killed in traffic accidents, huh? and the earth gets paved over with these ugly roads where you can't walk freely. I mean, this is advancement? I don't think so. And then let's talk about this electronics technology, huh? by which we're able to talk to everybody in the whole world, <laughs> practically speaking. But who can understand it? That's the problem. That's why direct physical association with a realized being is necessary to attain self-realization, unless you have an extremely high IQ, Einstein-level IQ. And even then, it's very difficult. So how will you learn this without a guru? How will you learn this without a teacher, without an example to show you how to apply it? So we've been teaching this knowledge for many years now. And it's very rare that we see anyone actually get it. This is why so many times I felt like giving up. Why am I putting all this energy into these videos and I don't see anybody really getting it? Well, there are a few, just a handful. But they are, like I said, the people with extraordinary intelligence who can pick things up just by reading or just by hearing. Most people of average intelligence need an example. They need to be shown practically, like an apprenticeship rather than academic study, because it's very difficult to bridge the gap from words and the meaning of words to the actual application of the science. That's why medical students have to intern for several years before they become doctors. This is why pilots have to be trained by an instructor for years before they get their wings. This is why Enlightenment students have to apprentice themselves to a master for a long time until they finally get the application of the science. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.